Welcome to Slapshot Podcast, episode number 12. I'm your host, Chris Formares. Thank you for joining me again. I know it's been a while, but I'm back. That's right. We get to talk get to talk some hockey. The All-Star game is right around the corner, so that's unexciting, right? Um, we're going to talk about the All-Star game today. Before we talk about the All-Star game, we're going to talk a little bit about Maybe kind of what happened between, um, you know, since we last spoke, which was Ilya Kovalchuk was making his arrival to Montreal. Um, that has been really good. I am I am out to buy his t-shirt. It's going to happen. I'm going to try to find some time in my life so I can buy it. Um, but yeah, definitely buying his t-shirt because, I mean, it's been really good since he's been in town. He's looking like a player who's rejuvenated his career and um, good for him though good for Bergeron for going out taking the risk uh, Kovalchuk's been doing what he's got to do has not been winning more really but it's good to see him doing what he does Kovalchuk is a real pro he wants to be here everybody knows it I love it good for everybody a um, couple of things also that happened maybe while you were gone some coaches were fired specifically uh, who are we talking about now? We're talking about Peter Laviolette. He was fired um, after the debacle that was um, the Winter Classic, right? I mean, they were the the Nashville Predators are just not where they need to be, and I kind of understand, I guess, why there was a change that needed to be made at the head coaching position, which again is it's fine, but I mean. <laughs> I I know that the Predators are supposed to be better than what they are. And they're not. And usually when players around let you down, right? It's it, it's got to fall on somebody and you can't trade the whole team. So you're going to fire the head coach. So Peter Laviolette gets fired because arguably they're just not doing a good job at doing anything. And it, this one, to me, falls a little bit more on the players, specifically goaltending. Because if you have terrible goaltending, you're going to lose. You're going to lose some games. And the Predators are not like their they're perennial playoff team. They, they go to the playoffs every year. It's not anymore just, you know, and they're expected to do something at some point. They, they This is a really good hockey team. And right now they sit, you know, they're way out of way well not way out of again how do i say this properly they're not far from where they need to be but a head coaching job to a head coaching change to start the year kind of rattles the team and says look like we're not tanking here we're not going to finish last they're sixth in this in, in the central division but they have some games in hand which is pretty good here they've played 47 games no team has played fewer games than the Nashville Predators. So they have about, they have four games in hand on Chicago, uh, three on Winnipeg. They only have one game in hand on Dallas, two games in hand on Colorado and St. Louis, all teams in their division. Let's forget about St. Louis. Let's forget about Colorado. I expect them to run away in the central division. I think Dallas will at one point get there, but teams like Winnipeg, Chicago, you know, Nashville is sixth right now. Minnesota is seventh, and they have 50 points. It's a really tight. There's eight points separating Dallas from Minnesota. So it's still tight in that division. Really, really tight. And Nashville does a little bit of everything that they should. They have a, you know, their record at home is 11 and 9 and 4. They're 11, 9, and 3 on the road. So they're not necessarily a lot better at home than they are on the road, which is kind of cause a problematic there. You would expect that to be better. Nashville's true problem here, the reason why they are absolute garbage, is they're not getting goaltending. And that's a little bit, a lot of surprising. <laughs> like, this is a team that has good goaltending, and they don't have it. They don't. Pecorine has a 16-10-3 record. He's got an 899 save percentage, 295 goals against average. Not good. Juicy Saros. Six and eight and four, eight ninety five save percentage, three thirteen goals against average. So this team is like it's not going well. Obviously, they're not getting goaltending, and you cannot be a successful team if you're getting subpar 
goaltending. They have an 892 combined save percentage, this team. Like, that's on par with the Los Angeles Kings. And the Kings are not a good team, right? San Jose has worse, which, again, Martin Jones is their goalie. New Jersey and Detroit. Those are the only teams worse than them. Minnesota has a better save percentage. Florida has a better save percentage. That's a little bit surprising. But teams below 900 save percentage, right? Toronto is there. And again, their their defense is kind of falling apart. And they're not getting the goaltending. Florida is absolutely surprising considering the money they gave Bobrovsky. You know, Ottawa's at 900 exact. And that's, I mean, that it, it is what it is, right? I mean, Montreal's not that great either. They're at 901. But... Again, it's one of those things where you just kind of look at it and say, well, like what's what's going on really? And again, a change probably needed to be made. It's probably not Laviolette's fault, but I mean, it is what it is at this point, right? So, you know, hopefully hopefully things change in Nashville cuz i want to see this team make the playoffs. I think they're a good playoff team. Their their defense is good. They haven't been, you know, miserably bad. They're just they're not getting what they need. They don't give up either a whole bunch of shots. I like they don't give up a bunch of shots either. This is the team that gives up the least amount of shots. And this season they played 47 games. They've given up 1397 shots. That's the least of any team. The least. Carolina's a really good defensive team. They've given up 1437. And then you got the LA Kings who are there as well. So Nashville gives up the least amount of shots. And yet their goaltending can't make us their, their goalies can't make a save. They can't. They can't do it. They try. They fail. And well, they suck. So there you have it. Garbage. That's the National Predators. The Vegas Golden Knights proceeded to fire Gerard Gallant. And this one, this one shocked me. And not, again, not a little bit, but a lot. Because, again, this is a team that I think people forget that they're like, they're only a couple of years. Of, like, they've been in the league a couple of years now. Okay. And the the expectations for this team are now real high. They need to be great. Like, this is not a team that says, oh, we're just going to show up and kind of exist. No. Like, you're going to be good. And th- there's, there's a culture in Vegas that's about, we're not going to be mediocre. We're going to be good. And they're not they're not really being as good as they could. They should be able to run away with the Pacific Division. And they're not. Okay? Let's exclude Los Angeles, Anaheim, and San Jose from the Pacific Division because... I mean, they're not good. Okay. So you have Vegas, Arizona, Calgary, and Edmonton all tied right now at 57 points. Vancouver leads the division with 58. Now you're looking at this, you're saying, well, I mean, they're they're tight. They're one point out of being the top team in the Pacific Division. Why would you fire your coach? Doesn't make sense, right? They've played the most games out of all those teams, though. Right, they played fifty-two. So Vancouver and Edmonton have three games in hand on them. Calgary has two. Arizona has one. Now, again, of the, that Pacific Division is way up for grabs. Anybody can have it, and I have no idea who's actually going to run away with it. And I do know that there's a good chance that the wild card team as well comes out of that division. Right, I do think Arizona can win the wild card spot one. Vegas could win wild spot wild card spot two. I don't know how good Winnipeg really is. I mean, Chicago is just the only reason they're in the conversation is because their goaltending has been outstanding. Robert Leonard has been great. Nashville's been disappointing. Minnesota is just they're just there. And again, let's completely discredit San Jose, Anaheim, and L.A. because they're they're nowhere near it. And Vegas is probably a little bit like Nashville has been their goaltending. They haven't gotten the, the goaltending that they need. And like Marc-Andre Fleury was hurt for a little bit, blah, 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 whatnot. He's got a 286 goals against Savage and a 907 save percentage. Now, again, the, the save percentage is all right-ish. I mean, it's 907. It's not great. should be better, but it's not. 
Malcolm Subban's played 16 games this season. He's 6, 7, and 3. He's got an 898 save percentage, 304 goals against average. That's not good. That is not good at all. This team is not good. And the way you measure not good teams, okay, is with, with a stat called PDO. So if you don't know what PDO is, okay, in short, it's an advanced stat that basically calculates a team's shooting percentage and their save percentage. And you put those two together. And that gives you a metric that, you know, we kind of, people in the hockey world of it, right? I know some people don't like advanced stats and whatnot, but it's a good, it's a basic tool to be able to calculate how teams perform. And when your PDO is low, basically it means that you're not getting enough shots or you're not scoring enough goals and your goalies aren't making enough saves. And that becomes a little bit of a problem. When your team's not scoring enough goals and they're not, yeah, I mean, if they're not scoring enough goals and they're not stopping enough pucks, that's that's problematic. So Vegas has scored 158 goals this season. Okay, which again is not is not terrible, but all right, it's not great either. And they've taken a hundred one thousand seven hundred and seventy three shots as of today. We are the twenty second, so that gives you an eight point nine shooting percentage. Not, I mean, again, not terrible, but it's not. It's not great. It's not where it needs to be. And then here's where things kind of get worse. Because now you look at their team's save percentage and you say, okay, well, now their save percentage is obviously not good. Save percentage, you can, you know, team save percentage, they give it to you on a lot of stats. So Vegas' team's save percentage is 901. So they're stopping 90.1% of their shots. All right. So if I throw this into my calculator, basically, their PDO is 99. Now, again, if you're below 100, it's kind of not great. You want to be in the 105 range. If you're in the 105 range, let's say, or let's say you're getting, let's change the numbers. Let's say you're getting 11% shooting and you're getting 92 save percentage. You're at the 103, which is pretty good. So you need to be above 100 easily. If not, it's not working. So this team basically, so so you fire your coach because if you're looking at this from an analytics view, your your PDO is not great. Like Nashville's PDO is even worse. So imagine at that point. And this is a team, like I said, in in Vegas, this isn't just we're just going to show up. This is probably more of a, well, we're going to shake this team up because we have a legit chance of still winning the division. Not just making the playoffs, but winning the division. And, I mean, I know there's some criticism as to why or, I I mean, Gerard Gallant's a pretty good coach. I think he can find a job like that in no time. And by re- replacing him with, you know, Peter DeBoer, a lot of people look at DeBoer and they just say, well, he's he was garbage. I don't think he's that bad. Honestly, don't. I think he did pretty well in San Jose, but again, this was a team that was, they didn't get goaltending. Everyone knows how I feel about Martin Jones by now, or if you don't, you should know, because I say enough bad things about him regularly for people to know that I think he's a not good goalie, and he's just, he's a trash can, and he will always be a trash can. But I do think Peter DeBoer can kind of turn this around. I think they have the best chance I mean, again, easy to say when you're one point out of top spot, but they have the best chance of running away with that division. They're a good team. They need Mark Andre Fleury to be the player that you know, the goalie that he is. They need Malcolm Subban to be the backup that he can be. Because if you're not getting good starting goalie and you're not getting good backup and you're not getting a good, how, well, let me start this again. If you're not getting good starting goalie and you're not getting backup quality starts from your backup goalie. You're going to fall apart pretty quick. And here are two prime examples of your goaltending being not good and coaches getting fired for it. So again, I do think, I do believe though that both teams can make the playoffs. I do think that Nashville has what it takes to get there. And I I mean, Vegas clearly does. 
and their division will give them the opportunity. Like Calgary's been disappointing a little bit as well. They haven't really got their mojo yet. Vegas has as well. Let's be face it. I mean, Arizona's hanging around, but again, this is a team that is like they traded for Taylor Hall, so they're not in the the business of just finishing, you know, in the top wild card spot. Like this is a team looking to possibly win the division. And I mean, Edmonton is as good as Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. That's it. Those two are going to carry that team as far as they can go. And Vancouver being where they are, I mean, good. But are they, you know, quality? Are, are they a top team in the Pacific Division? I don't think so. I really don't. And like I said, the other three teams just forget they even exist this season. They're not good. So that's that's what I wanted to talk about head coaches and those teams. I do think they can still turn it around, but they like like they got to get on it. Like, let's go. <laughs> and January is here. You don't want it. You know, February, March. Winning games at the end of the season is hard, but whatever. I still think they can do it. Now, as we all know, I've talked about it. The All-Star games are in the corner. And the All-Star game is a perfect opportunity to remind fans and the rest of the hockey world that nobody cares about this event. Nobody. Why? Because players openly refuse to go, and then they get suspended because they don't want to go, i.e. Alexander Ovechkin. Ovechkin has already said, look, I'm not going, and I'll take my one-game suspension, right? Other players have publicly come out and been like, don't send me to the All-Star game. Dylan Larkin, for example, when it came time to vote in the last player in each division, he literally said, don't vote for me. I don't want to go. I, I would rather have the time off. David Perron was, you know, invited instead, and that's good for him. And now, again, I'm going to tread lightly here on this. Artemi Panarin is out with a upper body injury, right? He missed his last game, and he's not going to go either to the All-Star game. It's kind of last minute there. Maybe he is suffering from an injury, maybe. Or maybe the team is using this as a good example to say, hey, look, I know maybe, you know, you want to go to the All-Star game, Panarin, and, you know, it would be nice maybe if you take the time to heal and be, you know, 100% for our drive, you know, towards the end of the year. And it's no secret that players would much rather have the time off. There are players that like going to the All-Star game. They do. They bring their family. There are also players that says, hey, I can go on vacation <laughs> instead and not have to go to the All-Star game. I would like that. I would like to do anything else but, you know, spend my time in an event that I don't want to be at. And that I find is boring and unentertaining. And it is. Nothing against, by the way, the city of St. Louis, where the NHL All-Star Game will be held. Like, St. Louis is probably a fun spot to be in. But, like, imagine this from a marketing perspective, okay? Just for a minute. If your best players don't want to go, how do you think fans feel about this event? Because I have not watched an All-Star game in a very long time. The last time I watched anything that had to do with the All-Star game was when they were drafting teams, when players were just picking players. Phil Kessel was last. He got a car. Ovechkin was taking videos of it. Like That's the last time I cared about whatever's going on in an All-Star game. And if I did care, I don't care about the game. The game is boring. It's useless. Players don't want to be there. It's a... Hot dog show at best. I care more about the skills competition. I want to see players, you know, I want to see players wrap around the ice pretty quick. You know, I want to see guys like Dylan Larkin out skate, be the fastest skater. Right? That's what I want to see. I don't care about the actual game. And I know there are other fans that do. And the NHL continues to shove this garbage down our throat. And I don't know why. Well, I mean, I know why. Let's face it. It's, you know, the All-Star game generates revenue for the league. So they're going to do things that, you know, mandates them to be happy. You have players now who have to have, right, a five a five-day break. So, I mean, that's coming up for a lot of teams. So Montreal is getting, you know, their five-day break falls into the same time as the All-Star games. So you get a ton of time off. If you're a player and you're saying, well, I got five days off. And if I could couple that with the All-Star game, I'd much rather not go, maybe return home, see my family, or just do something else and get away from the rink. Because the appeal for players to go is not there. 
And if your best players are not going, how do you want to market this game? How do you want to market this event? It's boring. The NBA All-Star Game is, I mean, is it better? I don't know. Not really. The NFL has the worst All-Star Game. Like, their Pro Bowl is garbage. I don't even know why they have it. Baseball, I mean, it's... Baseball ties together some type of actual implication. So if you win the MLB All-Star Game, you get home field advantage in the playoffs. And, I mean, that's nice, but you shouldn't let a game that basically means nothing dictate something like that. You shouldn't let it. So I don't want the NHL to start saying, oh, we should make the the, the All-Star game mean something. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. It's it's not it's not cool. Don't do that. Players don't care. Players don't care. They don't want to go. There are first of all, some of the players that go there, like it doesn't even mean an absolute difference. Like in the Atlantic Division, Freddie Anderson is there. Like, man, why? Why does it matter? He hasn't been great. I don't know why he's there. But fine, whatever. Tuka Rask, right? Has chosen not to go. So he's not going. All right. There are a lot of players on that list who are first-time invites. And that, I mean, not that first-time invites don't deserve to go, but man, in the Metropolitan Division, Braden Holpe is there and he's not an all-star. He's not. There are some players due to injury who can't make it, right? Dougie Hamilton, Corpus Allo, Panarin. There are players who will go. Nathan McKinnon is going. Patrick Kane is going. Good for these guys, man. Tyler Sagan, Eric Stahl, Roman Yossi. Big boys in the Central Division. Connor McDavid's going. Leon Dreisaitl's there. There are some players who are going. But in, in reality or the reality of it all is that this event is a non... I don't care about whatever happens. So if players don't care, I don't know why we have to continue to shove this garbage down our throats. I don't I, I don't like it. I don't know why it keeps happening. Here's what the NHL should do, because there's a point to this here, okay? The NHL, and I'm a big believer that NHL players should go to the Olympics because that's a great way to market your sport. But the NHL doesn't want to because they get nothing from it. The NHL is a greedy league, as all leagues are. Okay, It's about generating revenue. You want to generate revenue. It's good for the league, and it's good for the players. right? Players want it to happen. So naturally, you want to you know, host events that will give you money or at least generate enough. I don't think the All-Star Game is one of them. I mean, it sells out, but it's not. Are people watching this? On TV. I don't think they are. I don't think a lot of them are. The The skills competition can continue to exist if you want. You can leave it there. You can get rid of it. What not. My point tying in here. The Olympics is what? Two weeks? Right? And the NHL complains. Oh, we have to shut down our league for two weeks. Okay. But you'd probably do it if there was a gain. Right? If you could monetize that two weeks, you'd probably do it. Wouldn't you? So why not do it? Why not scrap the All-Star game and host a miniature tournament? Doesn't even have to last you two weeks. Doesn't have to. Do it for a week. Do it for 10 days. I don't know. Some type of tournament if you want. Scrap the three on three. Okay, I know it's exciting. But why don't you have the World Cup of Hockey every year instead of the All-Star break? Choose a city. Choose two cities if you want. Split it. And, you know, see if you can get, again, scrap the All-Star game. Do like you did. You did a Team North America. You know, you can do Team Canada, Team USA, Team Sweden, Team Finland, Team whatever you want. More players will be able to participate in it. Maybe you could host it in two cities. If you can generate, if you can get eight teams, right? Host it in one city, host it in another. You'll generate revenue. You don't have to do it in one arena. 
you could change those two arenas every year. Try to keep them close, right? Try to keep them close. So you don't have people have to travel all over the world, right? The goal is not to get much travel in here. Okay. But you have more players who get to participate, which I think a lot of people like. Give out a prize. I don't know. A million dollars, two million dollars on a winning team. Split it amongst players who win, coaching staff, whatnot, right? Have one of those things. Have let the, you can let the people vote if you want. You can let, I don't know, you can have coaches be part of these teams. I don't know. Some, I don't know. I mean, there's, however you want to do it, okay? However you want to do it. Doesn't matter. Just host a tournament like that. The World Cup of Hockey was pretty interesting. I went to go watch it. Man. Or create some type of tournament that's the same thing. You could have, let's say, I don't know, an under-23 team if you wanted. Like Team North America, I think, was. Like there was an age restriction or whatnot. I don't know. Something like that. Come up with something. Five on five, not three on three. Okay? I know it's exciting, but I'm not going to watch a a three on three tournament. I don't care. I don't want. Or you could. Let's say you want to go that route. Okay? Two periods of 10 minutes. Again, I don't know how many tickets you're going to sell to events that are three on three like that, but maybe you want to centralize it all into... You know, one event. You could have smaller teams at that point. They could share, like, let's say, a locker room if you want. You, you could have maybe two games at that point. Again, I'm just throwing out ideas here. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't interest you. But anything is better than the All Star game. You could have the Steelers Cup. Let's say you do want to go with some like three on three, or something like that. You could, if you want. Right now, you can host it in one arena. You could have, let's say, um, right, three on three again. Stick with that. You could have all these players. You, you could have a, make it maybe a full day if you want. Full day. You buy tickets to the arena, you, you get a full day of it. Two 10 minute periods. They do the ice at the end of, you know, the second game. Well, the second, let's say the first 10 minutes. Right at the end of that period or period or whatnot, then you get the next period starts, right? You, you do the ice after that. Team goes back. The other team goes out. You do a warm-up, five-minute warm-up or whatnot. Let the players turn around in a circle for a little bit. Whistle goes off. You pick up the pucks, blah, blah, blah. You go. You can do this all day with the players who are there and making a tournament. They play like two or three games at that point, kind of like you did when you were in like playing peewee hockey right sometimes you had like two games in one day or something or when you had those weekend tournaments i remember that where when you go out of town you play like five games you go to the final in three days then you play a game super early let's say on the sunday morning if you go to the finals you play the sunday afternoon something like that do that if you want to go that route i prefer the longer tournament five on five with maybe i don't know six teams Six different types of however you want to have break it up. Canada, the United States, North America, Team Finland, Team Sweden. That's five. Team Europe, if you want. Team Europe, there you go. Whole bunch of players from everywhere else in Europe. Put that together. Make it a tournament. Six teams. Play it over a couple days. Make it interesting. You could generate a whole bunch of revenue from this. Because you'll have multiple games. You'll be able to showcase it on TV, of course. Showcase it on TV. You can sell it to sponsors or whatnot. You can have, let's say you can have a skills competition at the beginning. Okay, You can set up your own point format or whatnot. I don't care. Maybe you have the skills competition mean something. Maybe, here's a fun one, Okay, because now they're including women as well. In the all-star game experiences. Well, maybe you have some of the women. Maybe you want to play three-on-three with the women. Maybe, again, throwing this out there. Make it interesting. I don't know. Maybe you have five-on-five and, I don't know, you have women being part of the teams. Or maybe you want to leave them just, or maybe you do the same thing. Have the women be part of it. This tournament. Maybe you have a men's division. You have a women's division. I don't know. Again, throwing out ideas here. Haven't thought this one through. I'm going to stick with what I originally was thinking here. Let's say you keep the skills competition and maybe you hand out the team that wins gets an extra one point in the standings or an extra two points in the standings or whatnot make it interesting like i said hand out a prize at the end i don't know 1.5 2 million dollars split it amongst the players and the coaches 
something interesting of that sort. Because anything, again, anything is better than the garbage that's going on here. I don't watch the All-Star game. There are other people who do not watch the All-Star game. It's not interesting. The NHL doesn't want to go to the Olympics because they're not making money. They should, by the way. And again, if you shut down your league for a week to run this event, well, it's less time than you would have to go to the Olympics. So your season's not necessarily getting longer. If you want to make sure your season doesn't get longer, we'll just cut out those stupid preseason games at the beginning. I don't know how many teams play. They play like, what, seven, eight preseason games? Cut that down to four at best. Four preseason games. If you want to have them all split squads, I don't care. Four, maximum. That's it. You don't need to be playing seven, eight. There's nothing you're learning from there. Nothing. Cut that out. Same thing in the NFL. They play four preseason games, man. Cut that down to two. You don't need that many. You don't. It's too much. Stop it. Start the season a little bit earlier. Start the season, let's say, last week of September if you want. Do that instead. But get rid of the all-star game. Everybody's tired. And let and like I said, the NHL needs to start thinking outside the box here. Get creative. Not everybody's going to like this idea. I understand a lot of people right now have probably, A, maybe like turned off the podcast and been like, shut up, Chris. You have no idea what you're talking about. Or just flamboyantly disagreeing with me saying I'm dumb. That's fine. But we're having a conversation now about it. We're looking into opportunities to do something, to make it interesting, get people's eyes watching their screens for these events. Everybody watches the Olympics. They love it. The World Cup of Hockey, from what I understand, was pretty interesting. I remember before their last edition, like the actual World Cup of Hockey that was done once every four years. You could do this event every year. You can modify it. You can tweak it. At first, I was thinking, well, how can you bring back the players drafting other players? That was fun. That was fun. You could do that, but again, you'd have to stick to a three-on-two tournament instead. You could televise the draft. As the NHL does with right their draft lottery, right, they televise it because there's enough eyeballs that want to watch it. If you were to do it a three-on-three style, get rid of these divisions, get rid of these divisions, elect, right, have all these players show up, right? People vote and they say, okay, well, these are the guys I want to see at the All-Star game or whatnot and have players pick pick divisions and hand out money. Players love money. Monetize it a little bit. Make it a tournament. Make it fun. Get people to watch it. But this one-day event of whatever the NHL is going on now is not interesting. Nobody cares. Players don't want to go. So if players don't want to go, why are you trying to sell me expensive, ugly, all-star jerseys? Why would I buy one if I'm not even watching it? The people in St. Louis are going to watch. They're going to go. Other people from around are going to get there and go. It's a fun activity when you're there, I guess. I don't know. I've never been. And I don't want to go. I'm not spending my hard-earned money to go to St. Louis watching a whole bunch of players who don't want to be there. Players don't want to be there. So why would they go? Sidney Crosby's not going. I don't know if he wasn't voted in or if he just didn't want to be there. But again, I don't want to go to an event that nobody wants to go. It's dumb. Stop it. Central Division is a pretty good team, by the way. Don't sleep on that team. Like, if you give a crap about this, Central Division is where I'm putting my money. I know the Pacific Division has Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on the ice, but, I mean, like I'm saying, the Central Division. (laughs) Just not enough people care about what's going on here with this format. Just scrap it. Make it a little bit more interesting. Go outside the box. You can still give the players their mandated five days off. Okay, you could do half a bunch of teams before the event, bunch of teams after. Let's say your event lasted, let's say you did a week. 
Okay. A week of it, of those events, right? And it doesn't even have to last a week. You could do five days. You can do it over a five day period. However you want. You have to you give half the players their five days off before. Right? Then you have that event, right? All star game event or whatever you're gonna call it now, World Cup or whatnot. Then you have the other half of those teams have their five days off afterwards. Boom, done. Simple. It's over. It's over, completely done. There are some players who are gonna get, you know, a bunch of time off, and that's fine. But make it interesting for the players. Players go to the Olympics willingly. None of them turn it down and say, yeah, by the way, no. I'd much rather have two weeks off my family. No, they want to go to the Olympics. They want to be picked. They want to represent their country. They don't really get paid much to do it anyways. But the event holds value. They see it as an, as something that they want to do. Winning a gold medal for your country is important to Russians, man. <laughs> And you'll never get that same effect with anything in the NHL. You'll never get it. But at least aspire to get there. Do something that at least gets players to say, all right, that I want to be part of. That I'll do it. I'll go. I'll do it. I won't voluntarily say, I'm choosing not to go and I'll take my suspension for it. Because that's like the league's handing out suspensions. Players are like, I don't care. I'm still not going. I got an extra day off. Like they're, they're going to report to the team probably. But still, it's all right. You're suspended. I don't, all right, I'll not go. That's it. I'm just not going to go. I want the time off. That's, that's how I would solve the problem of the All-Star game. Get rid of it. And nobody cares. Nobody's watching. It's garbage. Stop. I'm done. Like it's coming up. I'm not even like I'm not even gonna watch it because I don't care. If I do, it's because it's on the screen. That's it. If it's not on my screen, I'm probably not gonna care very much, and I'm not gonna miss it. And maybe if I play, like I would play some DFS. If they had some like All Star Game DFS. DraftKings probably has that running around. Like I care maybe a little bit to pick a team and throw a couple of dollars, but I'm not. <laughs> like that's the only reason I would watch it. If I had a couple of dollars, I wanted to blow on it. That's it. I'm not watching it for any other reason. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the podcast for this week. A little bit shorter this week, but that's fine. We don't have to go on forever. Um, as always, thank you to the people who subscribe and rate the podcast. I love it. You can rate the podcast on Apple Podcasts. You can rate it on Stitcher. You can rate it on Podbean. Um, you can get it on YouTube as well. If you enjoy that, you can get on Spotify as well. Spotify is probably like one of the places that a lot of people like to look, you know, listen to it. And it's nice. You can subscribe and rate. Obviously, if you rate, it's nice. You can follow the podcast on Twitter directly at Slapshot Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at FuzzyChris91. You can slide into the DMs and tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. If there's something you want me to talk about, we can, you know, tell me and I'll look through it for you. If you have a question, maybe. You want me to ask your question on the podcast? You can send me your questions. And for the people who also care, right? I mentioned it in, in a previous podcast, right? I have a Patreon account open for the Slapshot Podcast. If you want to sign up, it's $5 a month. Donate to the podcast. Like I said, I have, a, I have some plans. There's things I want to do with the podcast. And if you want to support the podcast, you know, by all means, you can. If you don't want to contribute, that's fine as well. I'm not asking you that you have to. The podcast will never be behind a paywall, so I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to restrict anybody's access to this. It's, I love doing this. I do it because I want to. That's the number one reason. I don't do it because I'm looking to get hella rich out of it because I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to quit my daytime job here. But if you want to sign up for the on the Patreon account and pledge $5 a month to the cause, I mean, you can find the link. I'll put the link at the bottom. Um, or usually what I'll do is if you, like I said, if you follow the, the Twitter at Slapshot Podcast, it's in the pin tweet um, that you can subscribe at that point. And you can subscribe. You can stop at any time you want. If you just want to give $5 once, that's fine. I don't care. There's not. I, I, I love you all regardless. It doesn't matter. Even the people who don't like the podcast. But I get so much positivity from people telling me that they do like the podcast and I love that you guys love it, so I'm going to keep doing it no matter what. And like I said, if you just want to contribute a little bit, that's fine. If you don't, I still love you. It's good. And yeah, that's what I had to say today. As always, thank you for listening. 
and uh, hopefully <laughs> it all stays true. We'll talk to each other next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>